Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for your interest in this overview of the Transportation Improvement Program, the TIP. Uh, my name is Elliot Lewis, and I'm an assistant analyst here on the TIP team. Uh, my role, among other things, uh, is to help the day-to-day -day administration of the TIP through our eTIP database and to assist in active management of a few funding programs that we uh, oversee here at the agency. Uh, so we've had a bevy of questions regarding our role in managing the TIP uh, and how it relates to the introduction or reintroduction, if you will, uh, of congressional member designated projects, uh, otherwise known in past life as uh, earmarks, although these are a little bit different this go around. Um, so hopefully today can be a time to clear up any confusion that's out there uh, regarding the inclusion of these projects in the TIP and just generally give you a better idea of regional transportation programming. Uh, we're recording this session today uh, and we'll post it on our website if you'd like to revisit it in the future. So I'll start with a short introduction of the agency, what the TIP is broadly, uh, and our relationship to other entities involved in implementing, managing, and regulating transportation in the region. This will just be a quick, high-level view. Um, and I'll uh, answer some of the more common questions we've come across and then follow it up with an open Q&A session at the end for any lingering questions you might have. Um, when we get to that part, uh, you can just unmute yourself and ask a question or you can post it in the chat box and we'll make sure it gets answered. Okay, so first off, uh, who is CMAP and what is the tip? So CMAP is the Regional Planning Agency for the Seven County Region, Northeast Illinois. We're the federally designated Metropolitan Planning Organization, or the MPO, for the region. So in this role, we develop a, um, a long-range comprehensive plan, which is on to 2050. Uh, we oversee a five-year program of transportation funding, which is the TIP, and uh, generally facilitate regional coordination and cooperation among stakeholders. So besides us, I won't get too far into the weeds about our intergovernmental relationships, but I just want you to know the key players to highlight in the context of the TIP are project sponsors and programming leads. So project sponsors, they're the implementing entities, be they municipalities, county DOTs, uh, transit service boards, IDOT, and so on. Programming leads uh, refer to those agencies who are responsible for processing project updates in, in ETIP managing project sponsors, and sometimes engaging in active program management of de designated fund sources. Often, um, these might be, say, the sub-regional councils of mayors. Um, they can be represented by planning liaisons who manage local funding programs and are in constant communication with project sponsors, implementers, state and federal officials, uh, and uh, CMAP staff. Um, these folks are typically the go-to resource for local project programming in their areas. And lastly, we have uh, state and federal agencies, the Federal Highways Administration, FTA, the Federal Transit Administration, and IDOT. Uh, all provide formal review and approval of TIP amendments, as well as oversight, guidance, other approvals, and funding. Um, IDOT, again, as I said, also acts as a sponsor for many projects. But you're here to learn more about the TIP. Uh, so uh, the main point is uh, this talk is, again, the TIP, uh, again, the Transportation Improvement Program. It's a five-year fiscally constrained program of transportation projects funded, at least in part, by federal sources. So the active years of the program are federal fiscal year 2021 through 25. Um, although you might come across a project in ETIP that has funds programmed outside those years. Um, whether like future uh, funding, I'll get to that in a moment. Um, they're in the ETIP database, but not necessarily in the TIP. Um, I'll, that, that's a question I'll answer here shortly. Um, the program must also meet air quality standards as the region is a non-attainment area for ozone. So in that instance, projects must go through a conformity analysis uh, to ensure the region is advancing air quality and reducing emissions. So uh, for our purposes today, it's important to note that this conformity process, it takes time and is approved biennially. So the next conformity amendment is uh, coming up in January. Uh, and with all this in the tip, it exists online, is publicly available through the ETIP database. 
So through this interface, you can see uh, individual funding sources, whether they local, state, federal, um, project phases, be a phase one or phase two engineering right of way, construction or construction engineering. Uh, you can see the program years uh, for this funding uh, for the project of your choice. Each project has a specific TIP ID uh, associated with it that you can search for in eTIP and it brings up that project. But you can also search for other queries like project name, location, uh, municipality, any number of fields. There's also a search by map function if you want to view projects in the same area. Uh, for more information on how to navigate eTIP, uh, we have a programmer's resource um, page on our website, or you can contact um, CMAP staff. Okay, so that's just a basic primer on who we are and what the TIP is. Um, just like I said, it's very high level, um, very short. Uh, but if it's okay with everyone, for if you have any questions on it right now, I, I'm going to dive into some of these frequently asked questions, uh, answer those, and then open it up for everyone to ask a question. So first off, I want to get this one out of the way. Um, why is CMAP being asked about local projects? Is CMAP prioritizing local projects? So as part of the introduction of these member designated projects, Congressional members were designated to focus on projects already included in the TIP, as they've already been deemed eligible by the federal agencies. CMAP staff was contacted to identify any and all program funds in each congressional district and to provide guidance on how to interpret and navigate uh, project information in ETIP. So CMAP staff has not and will not prioritize local projects or otherwise recommend specific projects for funding. Um, staff has worked with congressional offices to identify potential candidate projects, just potential candidate projects, uh, based on scope, phase, cost, and program years. But each office was directed to speak to project sponsors directly and sub-regional councils for more specific, specific information and to better understand local priorities. That's the first question. Next question um, got a lot is, okay, well, what, what's it mean to actually be in the TIP? Uh, does having a TIP ID qualify? Um, so uh, congressional members were, were directed to find projects that were in the TIP. It was a little confusing what that actually meant. So generally speaking, quote unquote, in the TIP means to be in the conformed, so air quality conformity, Fiscally constrained project list, that's part of the NPO's TIP. So to be in the TIP, and by reference the statewide TIP, a project must have funds programmed or committed in federal fiscal years 2021 through 2025, any of those years. Um, you, some projects might have a TIP ID, like I said. Uh, you can bring up eTIP and find it in our database. That does not necessarily mean that it's in the TIP. So um, projects such as those in a call for projects module or on a deferred list uh, or contingency program, uh, they might have a TIP ID, but they're not in the TIP uh, if they don't have those funds programmed in one of the current program years. They still have to meet those requirements. Okay, so, well, if it's not in the TIP, can a project actually be submitted as a member designated project? So according to the guidance released by the House Committee on Transportation Infrastructure uh, to their members, a project not currently in the TIP may be submitted for funding consideration, uh, provided that the submission includes three caveats. One, uh, verification whether it can be added to the TIP in a reasonable time frame if the funding request is included in the legislation. Um, two, whether the project is on a long range transportation plan. And three, it's a verification of the eligibility for the proposed activity by the federal agencies. These are things that uh, projects in the TIP have to go through. So um, a submission would have to meet those in order to be submitted for those um, requests. 
which leads to another um, common question. All right, then how can a project be added to the TIP? How long does that actually take? So to meet the requirement for a project to be added to the TIP in a reasonable time frame, new projects, illustrated projects, projects already in the eTIP database, they can be amended into the TIP at any time after funding is secured or committed as part of a regular TIP amendment cycle. Now, depending on the project scope and the work types, adding these projects could be an administrative amendment, a formal amendment, or a formal conformity amendment. Administrative amendments are reviewed and approved by staff. Formal amendments not requiring air quality conformity analysis. They require um, CMAP's transportation committee approval. And conformity analyses and formal conformity amendments uh, require MPO policy committee approval. Um, so the Transportation Committee considers formal amendments about nine times per year, and the Policy Committee considers conformity amendments, like I said, twice a year. Um, additionally, if, um, some more additional requirements and analysis by staff would be needed if any of these projects were deemed a regionally significant project. They hit uh, certain thresholds for that, um, which would likely require an amendment to the long-range transportation plan. Um, but typically, uh, the amendment cycle, if you want to talk about how long it takes, the amendment cycle typically occurs every six to eight weeks. Uh, although projects requiring air quality conformity or those uh, undergoing regionally significant project analysis will take uh, a bit longer. Um, so there's a, a transportation schedule we have our, on our website we can share with you that uh, shows sort of the windows that you've got to hit uh, before you can um, get formal approvals. Okay, and the last question in our frequently asked questions, um, is a project on a surface transportation um, program, locally, uh, local program or a shared fund program? If a contingency project is on that, is it a good candidate for a member designated project? The short answer is it depends. Um, a bit uh, equivocal, but it, it really does. Contingency list projects may or may not be candidate choices depending on the project status um, and should be considered on a case by case basis. Uh, so if you have a project sponsor who is submitting um, a project for one of these member designated uh, project submissions uh, that might be on a contingency list, definitely contact the program lead uh, to understand why it's on the contingency list uh, and whether it would be a good candidate. Okay, so with that, that is uh, about all I had um, up front. So we can go ahead and open it up to the Q&A session. If uh, you do have a question, please unmute yourself and ask it or put it in the chat box and staff is monitoring it now. Uh, we also have other staff on the line if you stump me. Uh, <laughs> see. Anybody have any questions? Well, if you're still thinking, feel free to hang out. We will be here uh, to answer questions, or if you think of anything later, please send them our way. We'd be happy to help out. Elliot, we've got a question in the chat from Abby Wilgreen at Crystal Lake, who's asking, can a project which starts phase one without any federal funds obligated or allocated towards the project be entered into the TIP? Let me read that again. So can a project which starts phase one without any federal funds obligated um, be entered into the TIP? So phase one, so these projects can be entered into the TIP um, 
but if they don't have any federal funds secured at all, and it also depends on the funding source, um, it can be in, in, entered as an illustrative project with funds uh, not in the current program year. Um, Cam, if you want to expand on that a little bit. Sure, of course. Um, good afternoon, everybody. This is Cam Adobs with CMAPS TIP staff. Um, so basically, yes, a project can be entered into the TIP without um, funds secured for phases beyond phase one. However, as Elliot mentioned, um, unless those, um, unless there are committed funds for those further phases, the project is considered illustrative. So that has an impact, one, on these member designated projects because the project wouldn't be considered to be in the TIP with just phase one engineering. It also has an impact on the NEPA process for a project. So um, federal action can't be taken if funds beyond phase one are not identified and committed for a project. Um, so I can go further. Now I can go further on that. And it looks like Matt Smith is also asking then if there's some other fund source, um, doesn't necessarily have to be federal for phase two, um, you know, does that count? And would that be considered not illustrative? And, and Matt and everyone, yes, it, it would be. So if there is a fund source, whether it's local, state or federal, um, committed to a project beyond phase one engineering, um, yes, those phases and th those fund sources can be entered into the TIP. And um, for local locally funded projects, um, in order to go into the TIP, we'd ask that you work with your programmer, which for municipalities is your Council of Mayors planning liaison, um, to attach documentation of the, the commitment of that funding so that, um, you know, if it didn't go through a competitive project selection process, for example, um, just a way for us to verify that the funds are actually committed in, in your budget or, you know, in the, in the case of Matt's question in Cook County's budget. So that answer your question, I hope. Uh, let's see what else is in here. So Troy uh, asks, so been advising people uh, the request through appropriations do not have to be in the tip uh, based on the guidance you've seen. So everything that I was talking about, Troy, uh, was based on the, the TNI uh, authorization process. Uh, so those, again, like I said, the project submissions don't don't have to be in the tip, but they have to the through this process it has to be um able to be on the tip at some point after submission in a reasonable amount of time um, i do not know as much on for the appropriation side of things okay and chris so uh, i understand from your remarks that there has been involvement by congressional members in the projects in the tip can you describe further what positive or negative impact there could be for projects in or not in the TIP? I hate doing this, but it's really, it, it, it depends. Um, a lot of this stuff, uh, congressional members are trying to find projects that they can apply funds to. Um, sometimes there are many projects in a congressional district that they can, they can uh, find some of them. Not so much, um, but whether to say it's positive or negative, um, I'm I really am not going to ascribe uh, uh, that quality as much. Um, it, it 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 makes this process a little bit more chaotic, uh, so we have to just pay attention on um, what is being requested, who is talking to who. Uh, but in terms of the project, it could advance a project um, on somebody's local priority list up um, all these funds that we're, we're running on the assumption that at least through the TNI process that these are going to be um, additional funds that may help to uh, allow programmers to reprogram funds to other projects uh, but really not exactly sure what that's going to look like until the submissions um, or the requests are submitted and the um, reauthorization actually goes through later this year.
Anybody else? Well, thank you for that clarification, Tim. Well, again, thank you guys for coming out. I'll stay here for at least a little bit longer. Um, I don't have any whole music to play. Uh, so if you, you want to stay and think of a question, that's great. If not, like I said, shoot them our way uh, a little bit later as they come. Um, but yeah, thank you for uh, tuning in and um, have a great rest of your day.